Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. We've got with us Herbie J. Pilato, one of our favorite guests. How are you doing, Herbie J.? I'm doing terrific, guys. How about you? Great. Great. Welcome back, Herbie J. Oh, it's always fun to talk to you. Um, you've been a producer, a performer, an entertainment executive, and, of course, you've written a dozen books on uh, television, pop culture, actors and actresses. Uh, so you you are a font of knowledge for us. But today we wanted to talk to you about one of your favorite uh, actresses, Elizabeth Montgomery. And, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you knew her personally. And you knew, you you not only got to know her personally, but you've written a number of, of books on her. Yes. I. What happened was I wrote um, a reunion movie for Bewitched back in 1988, shortly after um, I Dream of Jeannie 15 years later showed up on NBC, directed by William Asher. That was the highest rated TV movie of the time, of 1985. And I thought, well, if there's going to be a reunion movie about a, you know, a magical blonde in love with a, a mortal uh, dark-haired guy, it should be Bewitched, because Jeannie was really in many ways a takeoff on Bewitched. So I wrote a reunion. Got it to uh, Bill Asher. Elizabeth Montgomery did not want to do the movie, but Bill Asher loved it. And they were going to do a new series called Bewitched Again, where Elizabeth would pop in as Samantha and introduce this new witch and then pop off. And I was going to write for it. It was going to be done in the UK, but it lost the financing. And I had all this bewitched energy, so I wrote the Bewitched book, which is about the series. Then that was in 1992 that was published. And then Elizabeth passed away in 1995 and I revised Bewitched Forever or I revised the Bewitched book as Bewitched Forever. And then I thought, well, I really need to write a biography about her. So when I was writing the Bewitched book, I had interviews with her that Bill Asher had scheduled for me pretty much. He set it up for me. He said, you know, you really need to talk to Herbie. That's what that's what he told Elizabeth. You really need to talk to Herbie. He's he's really, you know, interested in this entity known as Bewitched. Um, and so when I finally did meet her after six months of calling her <laughs> to set up a time, she said, you know, Bill Asher told me that I needed to, to talk with you. Uh, he, he never tells me that I need to talk to anybody. So that was really um, kind of amazing. You know, that she, because she wasn't, she didn't really give interviews in general, and she definitely didn't talk about Bewitched. But for whatever reason, I touched her heart in some way. She knew where I was coming from regarding, you know, my love for the show and what I thought it meant about true love and prejudice. And had a strong work ethic that Darren uh, loved Samantha enough that he wanted to actually work to buy things for her. But whatever he could buy for her, she could twitch up. You know, so she didn't love him for his money. So anyway, I talked about all those different things with Elizabeth. She loved it. She appreciated that I appreciated her. And, you know, we had four glorious sessions where I sat down and interviewed her. It was amazing. So when she died, it was time to write her biography. And um, that was Twitch Upon a Star. And I had actually written 800 pages, seven to 800 pages of that book. And my publisher said, Herbie, it's too much. So how about we take the end of the book, which is an index, and we make that a separate book, and that became The Essential Elizabeth Montgomery. So essentially, four different books. The Bewitch book, Bewitch Forever, Twitch Upon a Star, and The Essential Elizabeth Montgomery, all about Elizabeth, mostly. Okay, well, let's, she had... let's, let's, no, no, no. Let's cut to the chase here, okay? She's not just a nose-twitching, uh, no. adorable gal that we remember from TV. She's actually got quite a, 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 a decent filmography and a, 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 a pedigree um, uh, from uh, her father was Robert Montgomery. So uh, can you sort of give us an arc of who she was beyond just this TV personality that we, most of us just knew and loved? Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. Well, first of all, she wanted to be an actress since she was a kid and her father did not really want her to do that. He, he didn't even let her see movies 
And these were, he was very, very established. He was a huge star in the 30s and 40s of, of film. And it was kind of odd for him to think that, you know, he didn't want his daughter to, to follow in his footsteps, but he really did. Not because he didn't believe in her craft or, or her talent. He just wanted her to live a different life because he had been so of hurt and dealing with the press and, you know, all the, the pressures that go along with, with being an actor. But she finally did, you know, convince him that she really wanted to be this actress. And she makes her TV debut on his show called Robert Montgomery Presents, which she pl- her character was played the daughter of his character. It was The episode was called Top Secret. So that was her first TV appearance. And then she went on to make hundreds um, of other TV appearances beyond Bewitched before and after Bewitched. She did everything from The Untouchables, where she played a prostitute, uh, to 77 Sunset Strip, where she played a biracial daughter of an African-American woman and a, and a white man. That, this is like in the 50s. Are you kidding me? That they would do something like that. Just amazing. Um, and after Bewitched, she certainly went on to make her mark as the queen of TV movies with A Case of Rape, uh, which helped to change the laws, congressional laws of of women who were raped in real life. Um, She did The Legend of Lizzie Borden, which to this day I cannot sit through because it's so scary. It was hard for me to watch Samantha get raped on a case of rape. And and in The Legend of Lizzie Borden, where she plays that, you know, horrific human being who, who killed her parents, it's tough. It's tough to watch it. But that, she loved doing things is, that were very different than Samantha, you know? And this whole thing about, oh, you know, actors are really actors, are not really actors unless they do drama, is baloney. You know, it's very difficult to make people laugh. And there takes a certain amount of talent. And Elizabeth had that talent just as much, I think, as Lucy uh, did on the I Love Lucy show, which in many ways... There were some episodes on Bewitched that were very similar to I Love Lucy. And both shows happened to be directed by William Asher. So there you go. She was very talented. And, and she made films, too. She made a, a number of motion pictures. She did. Before Bewitched, she did, um, what was it, Johnny, Johnny Cool, which was directed by William Asher, which is where they met. And they didn't like each other when they first met, actually. Then she did Who's Sleeping in My Bed with Carol Burnett, who became a very good friend. And then she uh, she did the um, oh jeez, I can't the think of the other of Billy Mitchell. Yeah, the court. Thank you. Hello, the yes. court martial of Billy Mitchell. I remember, I remember Mitchell. that. It was, yeah, uh, it with was, Gary Cooper, who song. apparently had kind of a thing for her. So, well, everybody had a thing for uh, her. Didn't yeah, they? who didn't have a thing for exactly? <laughs> Besides being talented, she was gorgeous. She was, she was gorgeous, and she had a personality. You know. She 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 had a wit and a humor about her, and she loved playing games, um, and she was intelligent. Uh, she you know she was well bred. She went to the New York Academy of Dramatic Arts, and her parents again you know were these established people, but she did not have an arrogant bone in her body. You know, and I asked her about that. I said, "How is it that you're so down to earth?" I mean, she would revel. Uh, and just ordering a pizza on the set of Bewitch with the, the crew, which is something she wasn't going to be doing, you know, growing up in Beverly Hills. You don't order pizzas delivered, you know, in Beverly Hills at that time. Maybe they do today. I don't know. But so she loved being a regular person. And she'd rather hang out with the gopher than go to some Beverly Hills party or Emmy's party, which is probably why she didn't win, because she didn't play that game. You know, she was nominated several times for an Emmy, both for Bewitched and her TV movies. She never won because she didn't play the, oh, I'm going to go and, you know, go to the networking parties and, and schmooze. She didn't do that. She wasn't that kind of person. So I asked her, I said, well, how did you retain your accessibility as a human being, your, your unaffectedness? And she goes, well, really, if my mother and father would have raised me that way or if I would have done anything in that way, they would have told me that's not the how you be. You know, that's not how to be a human being. And the great thing about that is that she also passed that down to her kids who are just all sweethearts. You know, Billy Asher and, and Robert Asher and, and Rebecca Asher, who is a major 
director in television today. You know, they're all sweet people, and so it's Elizabeth. You know, they have so Elizabeth. So she ended up them. marrying Asher. Oh sure. Oh I yeah, didn't they know. got they they married in uh, you know shortly before Bewitched began, and then they divorced shortly after Bewitched ended. You know, there was a lot of, and I talk about this in, in Twitch Upon a Star, you know, there, he had a, a wandering eye and, and he admitted it to me later that, you know, it was his fault that that uh, marriage ended. And, you know, usually, not always, but usually if it's a producer and the star in Hollywood and they, they come together on a show, usually uh, it's a business partnership as well as a romance. And if the show is canceled more times than not, you know, the, the marriage is canceled. It happened with Elizabeth and Bill. It happened with Lucy and Desi Arnaz to some extent on I Love Lucy. To some extent, it happened with Carol Burnett and Joe Hamilton. You know, when that show was over, it was kind of, you know, there's a reason these people stay together. And when you lose that, I, the attraction is gone, I guess. And again, this is not gospel or the way things go all the time. And I'm not sure it went totally all that way with, with all those I mentioned, but that's just the perception. That's what happened. Let's put it that way. Now, Herbie J in writing this book, you talked to a lot of her friends and uh, interviewed other people as well. I, yeah, I tried to talk to as many people as I could that knew her or that worked with her. Um, and it was important to 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 give that kind of balance but as i look back i was very it was very difficult for me to to write objectively about her because i knew her and i cared about her so much and she was such a wonderful person but i did you know um i i was objective in the book the beginning of the book i talk about how i met her and and whatnot and what she meant to me but i i still told the truth again but not in a salacious way that's not my mo that's not how I write. And I wasn't about to write some hurtful book about Elizabeth Montgomery or anyone who knew her because it was because of her that I have a career, you know? Okay. But I still had a job to do as a journalist as well. Quick question for you. Uh, when you spoke to her, I believe that um, she eventually uh, succumbed to colon cancer. Is that not correct? Yes, very but, young. But when, when you spoke to her, uh, she had already beaten or at least she had had colon cancer and it was no. in remission no no that... no i met her in 1989 and she was i don't know let's see 57 something like that but no she was not sick at that time at least not diagnosed at that time uh, but she really never took care of her health you know and uh it, it wasn't like today where everybody's so health conscious, you know, back in the day you smoked, you drank, it was okay. It was cool. Uh, and, and things like that, but she didn't cater to her health. And, and had she, um, been a, taken a little bit better care of herself. Yeah. She'd be alive today. That's what I feel. So it was, it was very hard. Cause then also the same month that she passed, I lost my dad. So it was a, it was tough all the way around. And, and she died at 62 and 19, uh, 95. Um, so I had met her in 1989 when she was, like I said, 56 or 57, but it was a, it was a magical meeting. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was overwhelmed and, and she knew I was overwhelmed and she was so cool about it, you know, and, and I was very respectful. And when I first walked in the door to her house, I tripped over the coffee table <laughs> <laughs> That was so well. That you had of, just finished watching Dick Van Dyke. I, you... It was it was like a sitcom, <laughs> but it broke the ice. You know, we both laughed about it, and uh, you know, and she said, first question she asked me was, you know, why are you doing this? And I told her about how much I loved the show and what it meant, and she says, okay, okay. And then I left her, and I remember leaving that the house the first time I had like a. a a crystal unicorn that I gave her because Samantha loved unicorns and Elizabeth loved unicorns. So I bought this, this crystal unicorn that I could not afford. And I bought four new tires for my car because I wanted it to, it to look nice. And I couldn't afford those tires either. 
And I just wanted my car to look nice when I when I came to her. And I and I also got her this calligraphized poem of what I, I, I wrote about what I felt about Samantha and, and her. And I said something like I ended it with bewitched succeeded because you are magic. And she just, you know, was overwhelmed. So I left on like a, I was getting ready to leave her house. And she goes, do you want a zucchini? And I'm like, e excuse me, what? Would you like a zucchini? So she, I said, yeah, I guess. So she, she jumps into her zucchini patch, this garden that she had in the middle of her driveway. And she hands me, you know, a zucchini. <laughs> and I'm, before I could say thank you, she goes, would you like another one? And I go, well, and she jumped back into the garden, got me a second zucchini. So here I am getting zucchinis from Elizabeth Montgomery. I'm giving her, you know, I have my new tires and I'm giving her this calligraphized poem that I had framed, Crystal Unicorn. She's giving me these zucchinis. Amazing. And I'm driving home, I'll never forget it. I just met Elizabeth Montgomery, I just met it. And I walk in the door in my little apartment in Santa Monica and the phone rings. The minute I walk in the door, and it's Elizabeth. And she goes, Herbie, what was that um, episode that I sang uh, something as Serena? Serena was the lookalike cousin she played on the show. I said, it was, you know, then I named the episode. She goes, oh, okay, thank you. And she hangs up. And I'm like, what just happened here? And then the phone <laughs> rings again. And she calls me again. Hi, Herbie. Uh, I just want you to know that, you know, it was really great to talk with you. And, and we're meeting next time, at, next Tuesday at 4 p.m., right? I said, yeah. I go, wait a minute. You know what, Elizabeth? I'm glad you called me because I wanted to tell you that I hope you didn't feel overwhelmed. But, you know, by the unicorn and I calligraphized the poem and I had it framed and blah, blah, blah. She goes, well, I was overwhelmed. I was. But I, I knew that it must have been tough for you. I said to myself, it must have been very tough for him to meet me because, you know, it, she was just amazing. We had become friends within those four sessions, never talked with her again after that, unfortunately, because she, you know, she moved on, but it was a magical moment in time uh, for, for me. And I think for her, because she felt talking to me was very therapeutic. That's what she said uh, about the show, because people thought she, you know, didn't think uh, highly of it. And that wasn't true. She loved doing that show, but when it was done, she wanted to move on. And, when she, when I went, me talking with her about how much she was still loved all those years after, she came to peace with it more so um, than I think she, she had been before with the show. Well, Herbie J., I have to say that uh, I, I've got two little phrases to share with you. First of all, I don't think there's any question but that you were bewitched <laughs> by her. But on the other hand, when you went to meet her, there's also no question in my mind that you had her at four new tires. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you didn't need to bring the other things. Okay, four new tires. I didn't tell her I had the new tires. <laughs> she could see. She knew. You know, it's like looking down a pair of shoes. They're either scuffed or they're like, oh, he's got new shoes. <laughs> yeah. Listen, believe me, a beautiful woman never gives a guy a zucchini if he's got scuffed tires. Yeah, it's <laughs> well, true. It's, it's something you probably didn't know at the time. You know, I heard this later. You're right. You're confirming yeah. something I know. <laughs> Herbie, this is a this is a wonderful book. Um, it does really, uh, even though you you don't make it about you entirely, it's really about her. It's her biography. You do have enough of yourself in there and your feelings and all, just as you've described to us today, so that it's a it's a really a wonderful story about you meeting her as well as her. Uh, it it and, is, and it's. I recommend this book to anybody who loves acting, who loves Hollywood, loves celebrity, loves television, uh, and of course anybody who loves Bewitched. So, Bewitched. Uh, yeah, uh, just a just a great book, and she lived such a full life. Such she was so well rounded. It, it all comes through in the book. So uh, congratulations, even though the it's not a new book. No, the, the book has been out, originally it was published in 2012 um, as a hard cover, then it came out a year later as a soft cover, and it's still selling, God bless. It's, yeah. it's, 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 
I'm very proud of the book. It's it's not your regular celebrity biography by no means. It's a self-help book, Hollywood book. It's Herbie Meets Elizabeth book, definitely. But it does cover her entire life and career before, during, and after Bewitched. Yeah. Anyway, by the way, great but, book and a, and a major accomplishment. For by you. the way, you've got some new uh, books that you're working on. Can you uh, tell, tease us a little bit about what they're about? Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm doing a, a new biography on Sean Connery, a new biography on Diana Rigg, and then I'm doing a combined book about Spielberg and uh, George Lucas, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, George Lucas, and their biggest movies. So the Sean Connery and the, and the Lucas Spielberg has taken me into film away from television, which I'm very excited about. So, oh, They sound like they're going to be great books. Plus, Thank you. We can always watch you as a host on your own TV show. Then again with Herbie mm -hmm. J. Pilato streaming on Amazon, Amazon okay. Prime. Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime UK. And we're in the second season uh, we, um, that we are filming or recording in, in post-production now. So that we're working on it now. And hopefully there'll be a third season too. Good. Well, we, uh, Herbie J., we want to have you back. You've got so many books. <laughs> to talk about. And you're always fun because we always get the behind the scenes, not only of the subject of your books, but we get the behind the scenes mm -hmm. stories from the writer. That's you. And, and oh. you're a great rock contour, I must add. Oh, thank you. I, I, you. You know, it's all about the host. It's all about how welcome the hosts make the guests feel. And you guys always make me feel welcome. Oh, you thank are you. always that's, welcome. That's a compliment. Good. We'll see you again soon, Herbie. Okay. See you later, everyone. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.